Hi, it's Ember again. It's been a while and I'm back to grace you with another explainer video. But anyway, I just completed the very buggy build of the main game. I thought that was a big milestone already, but the relief was short-lived. As I found out, I still have to debug, set up weird and confusing Steam backend things like Steam achievements. Maybe that's not too difficult, but we'll see. Localization, aka translation of dialogue, was a bit confusing to figure out, but I managed. But the main villain of this video today is implementing music. So you might think, what's so hard about implementing music in Godot? Just add an auto stream player and play, that's all. No! I want to make adaptive music! What is adaptive music in games? It's music that changes and evolves depending on the circumstance of your character, such as character position, health, state, etc. I made a video on that, you may check it out, and I'll link some more helpful videos from other people in the description below. Two popular middleware that people use to make adaptive music is FMOD and WISE. The first problem with this is that I'm using Godot and neither FMOD or WISE supports Godot integration. I'm not entirely sure how that complicates licensing and whatnot, but the fact that Godot is an open source engine means they won't be officially supporting it anytime soon, but thanks to the people who go by this username here, there is a GitHub repository of Godot integration with WISE. I tried that out and spent some days watching WISE tutorials, but the whole process was very intimidating with lots of confusing code. If you watch my videos, you probably know I'm not the best coder, and it doesn't help that things were popping up red in the debugger over and over again, things I didn't understand and therefore could not debug. I gave up and fled into the arms of a Godot plugin by this person called Godot Mixing Desk. Godot Mixing Desk is great. It's easier to understand than WISE, but WISE has a visual editor, which makes audio easier to edit. But again, red things kept popping up in the debugger, and I didn't know how to fix them, or admittedly, I didn't want to dig amidst all these codes someone else has written to find out the problem. At this rate, I might as well be making my own adaptive audio system. Terrible idea really, but it cannot be helped. So as with my previous dialogue system tutorial, I will just be explaining the big picture logic of my audio system. I don't know if my way is the most efficient way, so if you want to share your suggestions, we shall be happy to receive them in the comment section. Stems are the separate tracks when layered vertically make the whole song. DAW, software for making music, a lot of you guys know this, and stuff, this set of lines. You'll benefit from prep work such as creating a flowchart. Map out the scenes in your game, note down what music will play in every scene, what instruments you will layer, etc. This will help you figure out features needed for your own adaptive audio system. Second, you may want to watch FMOD or WISE tutorials because it will help you figure out how to structure your own adaptive audio system. So after doing the flowchart, I've decided that these are the features that I need. The note tree or the organization or structure of my audio system, whatever you call it. Please use it just as a reference because this part is flexible and varies from project to project. The first thing I have is a singleton audio manager which manages all the functions you can call in your game, such as triggering and muting stems. I've thought about the ways having my audio manager as a singleton might fuck my project up, but so far I have found nothing critical, so I think it's okay for now. Under that, we have the song. Every song is saved as a TSCN, which is a scene in Godot. I instance song scenes every time the game calls for the song through our singleton audio manager. Each song has song data. This is important for figuring out the seconds per beat. The DAW uses centiseconds, so I have a seconds to centisecond converter in my script. The next node you'll need under your song scene is the very important timer, the VIT. I use a timer to emit a timeout signal every time a beat passes. How do we figure out how long is a beat in the song? Math. Let's use this pseudo stuff here. There's two bars, four beats in each. Let's say this is a 60 second song. If we figure out the duration of each beat, we can figure out the duration of each bar. So 60 seconds divided by two equals the duration of one bar. So one bar equals 30 seconds. 
the duration of one bar divided by four, because there's four beats in the song, equals the duration of one beat. Ultimately, the formula to get the duration of each beat is the duration of song divided by bars total in the song divided by beats per bar. Round up as needed. So if the timer wait time is set to beat duration, which is the duration of one beat in the song, the timeout signal emits on every beat. You can do the magic yourself. Just an example to tickle your creative cells, you can emit a signal on every bar so you can introduce a motif only when the next bar starts, instead of jarringly in the middle of a bar. Pretty cool. Containers, the foundation of our song. Each container stores audio stream players of different stems. Core container stores all the stems that will play no matter what. If stems are put under the random container, it will generate a random number for each stem between 0 and 1. Less than 0 0.5, it plays this time around. More than 0 0.5, it does not play. The number changes every time it loops. If stems are put under the sequence container, they play in chronological order. First time the song plays, the first track gets played. Second time, the second track gets played. Loop again, we go back to the first track. If stems are put under the trigger container, they are muted by default and will only play when called by Audio Manager Singleton. The next thing, animation player. Remember I talked about how referring to FMOD and WISE tutorials might help? I really like the visual editor in WISE, so I used animation player in Godot to order and structure my music. It helps save storage too because you don't have to export the whole song but instead you can just export just the stems that you can position as you like in the animation player node. But if you decide to use animation player like me, remember, 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 use audio playback animation track instead of property track. That way you can trim, move, and edit the tracks itself instead of editing animation keys. You can use the snap down here to snap to the length of a bar. Tween is used for fade in and fade outs. But remember, remember, remember again, reset the volume to default after fading out. I forgot to do this and you don't want to waste time being frustrated like I did. Finally, let me share some tips that will make this process potentially a bit smoother for you if you decide to make an audio system after all this info. Firstly, don't worry if your code gets a bit messy. Just try not to use potentially buggy code such as having too many GD script files scattered around that are dependent on each other, this will result in situations where children are not yet ready but have already been called by the parent node, which will be a bug. Second, if you encounter a weird stitch, check your remote panel when you play your scene to see what nodes are introduced to the scene in real time. Phew, that was a lot of info and work. I am tired. If this is all too much for you at the moment, that's fine. You can always rely on fade and fade out. Personally, as a gamer, I don't think simple fade in and fade outs disturb the immersion at all. By the way, my game, The Secret Love of Dora and Pink, is on Steam. I would really appreciate it if you would go and wishlist it so we can trick the Steam algorithm into believing that this is a desirable game. If this was helpful or entertaining, like and subscribe. My subscribers are the source of 5% of my motivation. That's significant, right? If you have any questions about Kido and adaptive music, Feel free to reach out anywhere you can find me online, Discord, comment section, whatever. I'll try to answer your questions, or if my brain is not eager to help you out, I will hopefully be able to direct you to someone who can. Thank you for watching, and thanks Kado for being awesome and free! Bye!